Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming to our, uh, I guess, headless WordPress office hours. We're still calling them that. Not sure what type of event uh, we want to rename this as. But today, our topic is exploring headless login for WP GraphQL. And I have with us as a guest, David Levine. So one of the things that we really wanted to start doing was involving more members of the community and some of the events that we're doing, right? Because I think a community or an ecosystem like the one we've got going around Headless WordPress is only as good as the people in it. And David is just like a contributor to the nth degree. I mean, we just sort of laugh at him being on Slack and Discord all the time. Yep. And Jeff Taylor here too from uh, Woo GraphQL. Um, so definitely got some, some heavy hitters in here. Um, we're really excited. And so I think today we definitely want to talk a little bit about uh, a plugin that David is working on called uh, Headless Login for, for WP GraphQL. Um, so before we get started, let me let me just run us through some stuff. Etiquette alert, we're definitely recording this. Um, I think everybody right now could unmute themselves as, if you wanted to. Happy, happy to have you do that if you got a question later, but please don't make me regret it as has been done in the past. Um, I think I'll be like sharing some endpoints and stuff uh, as a part of the demo that we've got for today. So if you start messing around with that, just be kind, don't sabotage me and all of a sudden send off thousands of post requests to my GraphQL endpoint. Um, that'd be fantastic. Kellen showing up, perfect. Um, same right, thing so regarding kind. the, uh, hold on, same thing regarding, uh, we're gonna be sharing uh, OAuth client credentials later. Um, they're yeah. gonna be deleted after the session, but for the hour that we're on, please don't drive up my bill. <laughs> nope, nope, we don't wanna pay <laughs> Google any more money than we have to. We have we to, save, yeah. it, save it all for Twitter verification now. So <laughs> my comedy will be here all day. Thanks. Uh, but before we get started, I, yeah, I think we all just need to give David like a round of applause, three cheers, whatever you want to do. Because just like thank him for all the work that he does across the ecosystem. A bunch of the stuff that people are doing wouldn't be possible without his work. Um, and so, like I said, us as WP Engine and as a company, we definitely want to spend a little bit more time this year trying to recognize those people and, you know, get, get them on here. Um, with, with that in mind, definitely, I've got some links uh, that I'll, I'll share. Oh, no, I suck at Google Slides. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to drop some of these links in, in the chat and Slack. Definitely check them out. They're links to uh, David's GitHub repository um, and axpress.dev, his uh, sort of consultancy in headless WordPress. So definitely consider, consider him for work. Um, consider don't, sponsoring him uh, to, to work on the awesome ecosystem, awesome tools we got here. And then I got some links here that are going to go to actually the demo resources that I'm going to be building today. So you all get to watch uh, a normal mere mortal person like me uh, do this and we'll see how easy it is for me. So that's been a lot of work. I'm pretty sure your front head skills are still better than mine. See, but what do you mean by front end? Because when we say front end, I think I mean JavaScript. I mean okay. coding front end. Yeah, then, then, then maybe yes. As you long you, as we're not you want data to get to GraphQL, right? That's where I come in. But once it's okay. over the wire, man, I gotta hand it off. Then okay, okay, then cool. Then maybe maybe I'll be able to do this just fine. Um, but I know that was a lot of words, David. So like, you want to hop in, say anything? I don't know. I think it'd be cool, man, if we yeah, could also I get do. some background um, for sure. I do want to hop in and say some things. Um, yeah. First, I'm really bad at taking compliments. So I just want to say, the um, yeah, I'm here for the ecosystem. Also, you guys are highlighting me today, but I'm only here because of like the amazing people who are putting work into this. Uh, speaking of, um, just to mention some people who are hanging out in chat, um, Kellen Mace is actually how I got into the ecosystem. I was trying to uh, use Gravity Forms um, for a nonprofit site and didn't want to have to overwrite all WordPress, found the plugin that he was currently maintaining at the time, and now he works at WP Engine and I maintain it. Um, also in the chat, um, I'll keep on calling out people, but yeah, so, so that's that little bit about me. Um, I have been working in WordPress for almost a decade. Uh, before that, I was a um, project manager and nonprofit consultant and slowly realized that I care a lot less about solving individual people's problems and care more about the larger scale. Fell in love with GraphQL, fell in love with the community, the awesome work that Jason Ball and everybody that's here, Jeff Taylor, who's also in the chat, um, and everyone is doing, and that's where I've been. Oh, that's my horrible website. Because uh, I am not a front end dev. That background <laughs> needs to be higher quality. I think it looks great. Uh, I think it looks great. 
I mean, it's a block theme just being sent to the front end. So, but I could do some optimization. So yeah, so that's about me. I've been uh, dealing with GraphQL stuff for around three years. Um, as Jeff mentioned, I do uh, consultancy and work, but I much prefer to do open source stuff. Um, I I give back around 25% um, of all uh, proceeds that I make as donated time back to the ecosystem. Feel free to sponsor my work. I'd much prefer that than actually having to deal with you as a client. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's sorry, that's, that's that's on me. <laughs> yeah, cool. That that's awesome. Well, thank you again, David, for all that you do. Um, I think today, right? So there's you. I don't know where we want to start, right? So we we definitely came here to talk about the headless login uh, for WP GraphQL. So let me go back to my links right here. Let me pull up that plugins uh, repo specifically because I think it'd be cool for us to maybe start here. And just so like, I've done some authenticated stuff with headless WordPress in varying ways, right? So what it, what is your vision for this plugin? How does it like differ from what's out there already? Um, and what challenges so do you let's, think it solves? Yeah, sure. So let's start at the beginning. Um, off the bat, the only way you're authenticating in WP GraphQL core currently is is using basic auth. Um, you attach your username and password, or if you want to get fancy, um, you'll use a new um, you'll use a new uh, app ID that uh, got dropped a few WordPress releases back, and authenticate that way. It's not the most secure. It's also not the most friendly. Mm -hmm. um, things come into play like um, token invalidation and managing sessions, storing them for future things, trying to um, uh, sync sessions across accounts. If you want to deal with offline support, all the things get complicated. Which brings us to uh, WP GraphQL GWT authentication. Okay, um, yeah. and now that's WordPress something that plugin. I've used before. I've I've used that. So that's before. something that I've used. It's it's a great plugin. Um, it hasn't been kept most um, up to date. And um, when I had the idea for this plugin, I spoke to Jason about before, and he said that he was hoping for the community to take a bigger stance on it. So when I actually started okay. developing this um, this plugin, it was originally going to be an add on for that to just handle social authentication. Because okay. when we're building headless sites, like there's two reasons that people that people build a headless site, right? The first is they're a dev and they want these things like performance and static and all these other things. But as a um, as a business owner, you want headless because you want to provide your users with an experience that traditional WordPress doesn't give you. You want to be mm -hmm. creating these these new UX flows that don't happen. And something I felt that was essentially um, really really hard to do right now was um, was social login. So that's where I started. And then I realized um, the place of the GBT authentication were falling a little bit short. I spoke to um, Jason about it and uh, he said that um, he was hoping that somebody in the community would adopt it. And I just, I spoke to him and I said, you know, let me just start fresh. That way it's not, I'm not breaking any changes for anything else. And that's where this plugin comes in. Um, okay, cool. it, so yeah, so the eventual goal is basically one plugin that handles, there's also the existing WP GraphQL cores plugin that handles things like um, like uh, locking down uh, your GraphQL yep. endpoint. So that some of that stuff is in here as well. But um, ultimately I'm looking to create one place to, to manage whatever authentication strategy you want. Uh, currently, oh, wow. currently it's mainly OAuth2, um, passwords, um, and some some client side magicry to sync uh, client logins with your WordPress server. Uh, going forward, we'll be hopefully doing stuff like two factor password lists, um, anything else that you can think of, as well as focusing on um, uh, user meta uh, storing things. Okay. Things. Again, ways to enable. Say that one more time. Essentially, all the crap I don't want to do. The, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, main, I'm the head maintainer on uh, JWT Auth, and I made cores, uh, and I still kind of have both of them. I appreciate you so much, David. You're doing all the stuff I really. I'm so do. sorry. <laughs> when I spoke to Jason a year, when I spoke to Jason a year ago, not cores. Cores is great. Cores I had to do in because it's just too tied to the to the login mutations that every time I tried to build it in, it conflicted. Um, I'm happy in a future release now that this proof of concept is out to actually make things work in the ecosystem. Um, in general, I've been trying to focus uh, my efforts on adding new things and not trying to take away from stuff. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, we'll talk more. Well, there's definitely room for a collab. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also a um, hat tip to Jeff Taylor because even as he's maintaining the, um, I, I wouldn't call it a competing plug, it just handles a different, a different use case. 
Um, he's it's still uh, work together. Yesterday, two days ago, was helping me with the docs and my plugin. So thanks, yeah. Jeff. Yeah, no it's an awesome. Everybody's got really great relationships, and if it sounds like David's picking up something you don't want to do, Jeff, that's like the best work relationship that you can have. Is when like somebody wants to do the stuff that you don't. It it if that's true, that sounds awesome. Um, and I'm excited to see SAML here. I know a lot of enterprise educate higher ed stuff use SAML auth, and so just like that's really yeah. cool. This is a very like I, I love the vision here. I mean, adding the social auth seems like like a no-brainer um something that yeah a lot of people want to do and would allow people to build these really nice uh seamless experiences right that don't involve maybe sign registering directly with wordpress for an account um okay cool so like i know we wanted to do some demos and stuff um and i think david let's how, how do we want to get started with this right let me hop back here i've got this link that you sent me uh, should we start there? Yeah, start there. I basically um, scaffolded out um, a bit of a basic repo with a couple components. Um, it's okay. it's totally Let experimental, but it is a working example of um, for anyone watching. Um, it is a working example of um, of a fully block powered theme, or almost fully block powered theme, as much as we okay. can do now. Um, template headers and footers are coming in. I'll, we'll actually set that part up just so it's actually working. And then okay. we'll build on top of this to uh, to handle the actual uh, service side auth. Okay. Okay. So and I dumped you... the link to this uh, for everybody in the chat if you want to take a look at it. Um, and we went through pre, uh, like in the the pre game for this call, we went through and I have a WordPress site. Oh man, I, like can I move this Zoom thing? Sorry, y'all. I'm gonna I'm gonna fuss <laughs> for a second. I just got to get this out of the way. Like Zoom still talk about building better experiences. Everybody, can Building everybody still see my screen? Experiences. Yeah, Give we're good. Thumbs up. All right, cool. Uh, let's rip that back in there. All right, cool. So we're back on this repo. Uh, and then, yeah, let me open up my WordPress site. And what, so we've got Faust already installed, headless login for WP GraphQL, rank math SEO, uh, WP GraphQL content blocks, WP GraphQL for FCC, and then our Just WP GraphQL for rank math SEO extensions. Basically, we got everything Jeff. listed right here. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. For for people following along, if you're doing this on your own code repo, we don't need rank math. We don't need FSC. Um, by the way, FSC isn't an actual plugin. It's just powering um, a bit of uh, experimental stuff built onto WP Engine's uh, content box to get our template parts. Okay. Uh, that's just what that is. That was exactly what I was going to ask. Thank you. Yeah. Not a real plugin, uh, just, just so I can play around. In fact, that's what oh, this okay. repo will be in general. I'm just playing around with trying to reach um, parity between uh, traditional WordPress and headless. Gotcha. So don't well, use this code in real life, too, but as a inspiration. <laughs> as a compliment, I have to give you a compliment on your readmes. They're 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 excellent. Um, I, oh, actually, really well organized. Because this whole thing is structured, so you're forced to give me feedback on our on my readmes. Because my imposter syndrome is like, oh no, like this has to no, be better. It's great. Like, it's I don't good. know front end. I don't know how to walk. Yeah. Well, thank it's you. Good. It's good. Yeah. And let's, and we'll, we'll definitely, I mean, maybe we got some feedback that we can give you too about the step-by-step the -step stuff through here. Okay. So, all right. So what's included? We got another guest coming in. Uh, welcome. Welcome new peeps. Uh, thanks for joining us. We're on the repo that you can find in the chat. Um, okay. So I guess from here, right. I want to make a, copy of this template right sounds like a good plan okay so what do we want to call this uh headless login and i guess this should be me uh and i guess this will be public all right so while we got that spinning up i've already got my back end dependency situation set up um so i guess from here oh nice it's a template already so I guess I want to clone this down locally, right? Yeah. And then get working with it that way. All right. So we got that done. Get it there and then open this up in VS Code. All right. And I don't know that I really need this terminal anymore. So I'm just going to close that out. Give us, give us some uh, more, more real estate to work with. All I right, so love let me have your color theme. 
So this is literally just West Boss's color theme. I think it's Cobalt 2. <laughs> so all credit to West Boss, but everybody says that. Um, this, yeah. The, and then I just customized this. You got fire a code too? Sorry? It was supposed to work with fire a code too. <laughs> that's the that's the font jeff you heard of that oh is it yeah. yeah um i don't think i have that i don't think the fonts came through no no but the theme did yeah um by the way just to screw with jeff and everybody else this repo uses tabs instead of spaces because i am a wordpress backend developer so sorry <laughs> no that's fine i use tabs instead of spaces so we're really a company. yes well here's the question um, ligatures or no ligatures no ligatures. Good. That's the right answer. I don't care anybody. Well, else ligatures would just be an extra always step. No ligatures. Like, if I I didn't I didn't even install the font from West Boss's <laughs> like fancy thing. Like so, I'm 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 bare bones with a lot of stuff. Okay, so, so head over uh, this, to um, the how to file. Oh, the how to file. Our, Where are we at? Yeah, that will walk through our actual steps. Ah, uh, this one right here, right? Yeah. That's okay. What we're actually doing All right. Today. Cool. But before we get here, um, this is a Faust project, so we do need to uh, we do need to set it up. Uh, okay. Right? Creating your .env file um, and putting in. Um, All right. Do we have a sample .env file yes. in here? All the way at the top. .env .example. Ah, there we go. All right. So we'll cp .env. Okay. All right, and then what do we got? It next public site URL. So we do. Do we need both of these? Well, your site URL is your local host. So if you're not using something different, um, okay. And but um, your WordPress URL uh, you need to put in. All right. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. So snag this from here. All right, and then I guess let me get my foul secret key. We probably don't need it. We're not we're not looking at previews or anything else, but why not? It's there. Yeah, I'll do it and then delete it after. Like I said, be nice to the demo stuff. All right. So our ENV stuff is situated. Um, and I think right. we did a bunch of these prerequisites, right? Like um, yeah. Uh, the only thing um does your uh does your site have some demo content on it? It or does. It has, yep. So it's got at least these 10 posts uh let's check the theme is this a block theme or is this a oh go, it is go to not a settings. block theme yeah so let's switch uh, to a block theme just okay because i know it works actually you want to grab um you want to grab your coworkers' new theme uh do you yeah want to frost, let's and frost. Install that? yeah can we is that on the repo yet i don't know so. let's not check yet. it out not yet. not yet okay yeah you can do frostwp.com and there's a download button there wp.com Download. Yeah, Brian was so excited when he saw that. Glad to hear. Probably should have been spending more time on this than on that yesterday. But, <laughs> no, I think it's cool. There. I think we have a really, really eclectic audience, people who've gone deep. So I think we should show whatever, what all the sure. interesting stuff. All right. So we're going to sure. activate the theme, right? Mm -hmm. um yep and then we get our editor which is no longer in beta as of 6.2 or whatever okay so but what cool. we do we need to do theme. because you got a home page uh probably not let's see i don't think so all right so go into editor and we're just going to copy his uh template oh man here. david's going to teach me full page. site full site yeah. editing too there we go template parts uh oh, no, template no, right. parts. templates no you're right you were right <laughs> okay it's <laughs> like all right, and then we want to go, go to home. home. Yeah. Um, okay, and then edit. Edit. Yeah, and then just this switch over to the code editor. To copy the whole thing. Okay. Uh, that's uh, Command Alt Shift M, I believe. All yep. right. All right. Just copy this whole thing over. Okay. And let's go create a new page. All right. Uh, we got to go out entirely. Page. Okay, you like gotta... so I'm creating a pay a page post. Yeah. Type. We're creating okay. exactly. We're creating a page. We're going to set okay. that as our home page, and we're going to have some basic block content for it, All just right. so we have so a site that we're working with. Call this home, and then I guess go to code editor. Yep. And then paste it all in here. Do I even need just this? before before you hit save though? Um, just delete the first and the last line. Um, 
of what we copied over. Ah, uh, the template parts. Those template parts over here. Okay. Yep. Because the the template will replace those. Okay. Cool. Everybody didn't know they were getting a deep dive on full site editing. Full site right, editing so, in five minutes. Yes. Now let's go. We'll just go ahead and publish. No title. Should I have a title? I should give it a title. I don't think we yeah. care. It'll help with the SEO. Yeah, there we go. Right, and now just go to settings and set this as your new homepage. Okay. And then we can get back on track. General. This is reading, right? Home. All right. All right. We're okay. Good. Now let's switch okay, back. Cool. All right, where are we switching start. back to? Uh, We're to, uh, to back in JavaScript, right? Okay, yep. okay, cool. All Let's right, yarn so install this baby. Yarn install, npm install. Does it matter? I don't think it matters. I've been using yarn because it's faster. Okay. I haven't tried with pnmp, uh, pnpm, so no idea about that. Well, yeah, and we got some people asking about using Faust with yarn the other day. Uh, I am using because... it with yarn. No problem. Okay, just here. fine. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. Um, because like they were trying to use the pre install script oh. in npm, which doesn't actually run before your dependencies install, where yeah, the yarn one does, which is strange. Yeah, but I, mean, I don't is... even think that's part of my build step. I think I edited my package JSON a little bit. Okay, all right, so that's installing. We've got frost. Let me just do some tab management here so I'm not lost here in two seconds. Sure, and, and then we've done these things, right. Well, yeah, we, we can move on to. Yeah. We'll just start configuring our backend while we deal with it. Okay. This. All right. So, so, all right. So, um, configure headless login settings. We're going to hop back into here settings. Let's just check these. These are all just warnings, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, headless login tab. Um, apologies for the UX, everybody. Um, now that the proof of concept's out there, I'll. Oh, wow. This that. looks cool. <laughs> it's not. What are you uh, apologizing I think, for? Yeah, this looks great. Yeah, man. I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry i yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Even do this I'm, from now on, time. when you apologize, David, you need to say, "I'm sorry for all the free value I've given you." I am Repeat sorry after for me. All the free I'm value sorry. I'm given. sorry for all the free value I'm giving you. Because <laughs> this looks great, and like uh, I like that. I, I mean, this uses the the WordPress components, right? Like that's cool. yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's using the standards. I think this is eventually, if WordPress ground. gets a Fields API, it'll be even better. But until then, yeah. we suffer. Yeah, well, we suffer in silence or on live streams. Um, all right, so we're going to be setting up the um, both Google and password auth. So let's okay. just um, enable those um, before the um, uh, session so started. Passwords, I, yeah, password. I need just, to just enable. Yep. And call it okay. password, call it something. If we want to display it in our front end, we probably don't even have to. Password, but, okay. And then save. Save provider. Yep, because every right. section has its own save button. Man, again, it's got this little... For the toasty things too i mean it told me the settings are saved now there's a green light this is great it's not gonna be because whatever uh it won't scale google uh, we're also we're gonna enable this provider okay and then just call, call this google. google um as a reminder um i already gave jeff these uh yes. ideas and secrets they're valid until the session's over please don't abuse them while we're on on live if you want to play around with it for please a little don't bit, just keep it uh all right, so copy our secret. Let's see our client. Is the client the whole? Yes, that whole thing, thing I sent you with the dot Google. Okay, with the dot Google. That was my question. I was like, I wasn't sure if that was part of that. Yeah. This or not? And then we need the the u the URL. We need a redirect too, URL. Right? Yeah, which okay. is what we're going to create in our app. So we'll just okay, okay. Um, um, anything else just, we need? Yeah, scroll down to the login settings just to make it okay. easy. Let's log in existing users. Yeah, let's create a new user and okay. let's not deal with auth cookies because that's beyond the scope. Save provider. Okay. All right. And we're good to go. Um, did our back end install? Our front end, sorry. Yeah. So it looked like we got something. Uh, 
Okay. Fail to load schema. Uh, oh, the type make sure. Schema. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah maybe. Uh, permalinks. Permalinks. Okay. I mean, go to your settings, go to permalinks, and just hit save changes. Well, is uh, introspection even permalinks. enabled on this? Uh, yeah, that's what install? I was going to check first. Let me check that. It should be. Um, Maybe it's later not. on. We'll talk about using. Oh, there we go. Domains. That's okay. It was that was my bad. So enable public introspection, which would be important for this. All right. Uh, so I guess do I need to install? Yeah, run uh, yarn install. No, yeah, uh, yarn prepare will do it, or it even runs before yarn dev, I believe. All right. Uh, just generate possible types. All right, got it. Got farther than it did last time. It looks like. All right, cool. There we go. Okay. Let's power up our uh, Yeah. Okay. So, ooh, and we're in yarn now. Yarn. Do I do yarn run dev? Yeah. I think just yarn dev. Oh, they both work. Good to know. And you're right. It does. You ask me how to install like things it. with Composer. That I know. <laughs> uh, okay. So, localhost 3000, right? That's where we want to go. Da -na -na -na. Piling. Oh, because it's the first run, yeah. Yeah. All right, so we did that, right? All right, so now. Uh oh. Oh no. Get 404 page. I've got too many, too much logging on here. <laughs> yeah, let's see. What was that? Get front page node, I saw in there. I'm going back to the top. Okay, so we did that. Something's wrong with SEO. Scroll lower. Keep going. It'll turn red in a second. Just keep scrolling. Okay. You see, there we go. There's it. slightly higher where it says error on the left. Oh, there we go. There Internal we Internal server error. Why? On page node response body. Yeah. I I don't Whatever. know. Whatever. Let's True. see. It's running though. Let's see if it works. Is the site loading? Nope. No, it's not. Damn it. <laughs> oh, well, that was yeah. fun, everybody. You can go now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for coming. Nah. Let's uh let's maybe maybe try out. the permalink things, right? Because it said something about get front page. And I'm assuming this assumes that I have some something as the front page, right? Yeah, which we want to check the IDE and see if it actually loads up if you get a schema. Oh, smart. Yeah. Very composer. Yeah. So it's Do not a, log it's the not login good. clients. Where's that? There's login clients well, here. Login clients. Yeah, we're going to use that in our front end. So let's all the way at the top. Ah, login Better. clients. Okay. And then. All right. Okay. I mean, it's getting stuff back. Should we update permalinks, maybe? Um, update permalinks and also that. enable uh, GraphQL debugging. Maybe we'll get a... Yeah, more, okay. Um, Let's do debugging first. More verbose, sir. You guys are getting the real experience over here. Oh, that's query logs. Uh, you can use the enable GraphQL debug mode. Which query is failing. What's failing? I'm assuming a number of queries are running at the start of the application. You can use the network tab to identify which query is failing. It's slightly oh, worrying. Uh, yeah. It's, you have it's a filter. Really, you're link. filtered on the left. Thanks. All right. Yeah. So, well, hold on and let me restart this first. Did you disable the, sorry, did you enable the GraphQL logs? No, no, I think, yeah. I'm getting so we drawn all over the place real quick. Yeah, yeah. All right. So let me let's let's do one thing at a time. Yeah. All right. Enable, Enable GraphQL those. debug mode. All right. Let's do that. I'm just gonna flush the permalinks. Post name. And we'll just save changes. Make sure that's not it. Um, and pages. I mean, that's coming up as our front page. So that should go to go to rank math. Okay. There we go. Skip now. 
keep skipping whatever we can do yeah uh, just yeah that return to dashboard doesn't really matter oh it doesn't matter or yeah no skip this skip and return, return to dashboard, dashboard. Oh, okay and you think that might have been it just wasn't configured i'm hoping so okay all right well let's hit yarn dev one more time Okay, compiled. There we go. Okay, cool. So okay, we still got some, some like log, and this is just, uh, you said this was just verbosity. All right, so no errors yeah. in here, we're good. Yeah, we can actually All disable right. this if we don't need it. Um, I mean, um, I think it's fine for now. It's okay, great. Keep rolling. All right, cool. So we got our, our frosty theme. Frosty yeah. have this WordPress. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the first thing we want to do now, we've got our website. If you want to click on some pages, you can. But okay, the first yeah. thing we want to do is create our login take, page. Oh, okay, right cool. I'm just checking, I'm just checking stuff out. That's neat. Sucked in the menu. All right. All right. So if we you want were to, to convert our these page. pages to blocks, they would work, but we don't care about that. So let's go to our back end. Okay. Um, and just what I'm doing now, this is a bit of a hack. Um, instead of creating a, um, an actual next endpoint, a next page, I'm just going to use the leverage, the Faust template system. So go to pages, create, add new. Okay. And just call the page login. Login, not lo login. login. Okay. And, um, publish. Do we want any content here? Yeah, sure. Write a login message for the folks. <sighs> Uh, let's do use your magic Google password. Just convert this back to a block so it looks nice. So uh, command yeah, shutdown. let's do that. What do I need to do? Just classic? No, that's not what I want. Convert to blocks. See, I'm fail. I, I'm I'm I fail so hard at block editing sometimes. It's it's a major learning curve for people who have been on the old way. Like clients absolutely love it if they haven't touched WordPress before, but it's definitely a paradigm change. All right, publish. Okay, cool. All right, that's updated some stuff on our app. All right, so that's in place now, right? And I should that should mean that if I go to slash log in here, I see something. Yeah, well, I cheated a little bit. And before we started, um, I actually, oh, did I not? Uh, what branch are you on? Uh, uh, demo no, in, server side. No, no, in the actual uh, ID because I remember you pulled it. Oh, down here. Yeah. Main. Yeah. So switch over to um to demo server side, or I guess we can do it over here. We don't care. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, well, what, uh, do we, what do we need to do? Well, I was just showing the, um, what I did before we started is I created just a couple basic front end components so we didn't have to waste time with that. Um, oh, so you know what? Yeah, yeah, switch the branch. Switch the branch. Okay. Let's save the time. All right. They're they're ugly. Right. I'm using Tailwind, but but you guys are hopefully front end developers. And, and what did we I'm say? Back Demo end. server side. Yes, server side auth, I believe. Uh, server side auth. Server side auth. Okay. Okay. Demo. Don't forget the track. All right. So what's that going to be? Get check out dash dash track. Yeah. Okay. Upstream slash demo. All right. Oh, just Please. click on the branch tab and just uh, ditch those changes. All right. We have a green thing. Okay. 
Okay, right. great. <laughs> we all need right. to read so the first end <laughs> file is still good. All right, let, let's do a yarn right. dev, make sure we're all back where we want to do. Thank you, Kellen. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, Appreciate wow. your uh your your get your get guidance there. All right, all right. we are if, we're, we're if you want to push right, this so, your repo too, there's another command, but you don't we'll have deal to deal with that later. <laughs> yeah, I'm, well, we're already now, running behind. I'm schedule. looking. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> right, I'm looking at time right now, and we, we can run a little bit over. There's no set end time. If you got a bounce, you can catch the rest of this on uh, YouTube. I'll cut out some of our fumbling there, so you have so a really quickly experience. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let All me right, just so quickly got show the files that got created. Um, go okay, to cool. WP templates. All right, uh, source, SRC WP, WP templates. templates. Login. Right, we've got our login. Right, we're just pumping in a login page. Right, most of this stuff okay. is just scaffolded out. It's not actually doing anything, but it brings us to the login form container on the right. If you all right, this nice handy Play login form container. Yeah, which will be in features uh, login, I believe is what I called it. In the um... features login. Okay. Yeah. Login form container. Right, we've got. And now here's the stuff that I want to focus on. We're doing three okay. things over here in this component. Um, okay. We're, or actually, sorry, go back to the login index um, or login. I'm trying page. to remember how fast does the how fast how fast does this? Okay, go to login form container. Sorry. All right. All right, and at the bottom because we co-locate our. Um, okay. Right. This is this is essentially what we're doing. We've already created our clients. Um, if you wanted to create your authorization URL manually, you could. But because we need it anyway to authenticate things on the back end, we can just grab it. So what we're doing is we're fetching all of our login clients. Okay, now go to the login page. Uh, okay. WP templates. Like, Sorry, in WP templates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me uh, open that too. Let's log in. All right. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, right, right, we've got our login form fragment over here, which is just being spread on the root query. And then if we scroll up again. Right. That's client login clients is what's being passed into that component. Okay. All right. So now let's go to login form container and I'll walk through the important logic because we're trying to do two sorts of uh, clients over here. We've got okay. our OAuth clients and our password clients. So we grab them all. We're filtering through to just get the ones that are enabled. Gotcha. Right. We then split them between all of our other clients and passwords. Um, at some point, the reason this is a point release is because we'll work on um, the shape of the schema in the future. And then, and then that's it. We've got our login client list, which is just a, right now, it's just a list of URLs. And we've got our password form, which yeah, is just okay, a right username here. and a password. And that's, that's what we're looking at. Okay. All right. Cool. So yeah. we're doing this. We're getting all of our login clients from WP GraphQL, filtering through them. Yep. And then wrapping out one of these components yeah. for each OAuth client. Um, okay, cool. All right, All right, so. And now we're going to start click through. Yeah, just make sure it works. Click okay. login with Google. Oh. Oh, I didn't. Oh yeah, we oh, need because we did set up URI. the redirect URI. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So, okay. so cool. Um, uh, let's actually, let's go ahead and create redirect a redirect type. URI right now. Okay. Right. And I know I'm going to need to go back here for that, right? It's to some degree. Uh, well, that. yeah, to some degree. Okay. Um, where where do we want to go to, to make that login well, page? Let's um, go into uh, pages uh, slash API and create a new API endpoint. Okay. All right. And let's call this, um, what do we want to call this? We can call I guess. whatever we want. Just redirect? I guess that's not a good one. Um, well, actually, no. Let's let's do it by provider. Um, do um, let's do a, a catch-all as provider. So uh, bracket uh, provider close bracket as provider. One. Sorry, sure. just one bracket provider. One bracket provider. Do don't, don't need the word as. Okay. Close bracket. All right. I'm pretty sure that TypeScript isn't actually enforced. So if we want to use JavaScript, we can. Okay. Right. And what this, um, and now we know where endpoint is going to be. So provider is basically going to be whatever, uh, whichever authentication provider we wanted. So we can only, we can use just one endpoint if we wanted to also add support for, for Facebook, Twitter, anything else. 
Okay. Um, so now that we know what our endpoint is going to look like, let's hop back over to the back end and let's just All put right. that provider. And that was in. where it's in the settings, GraphQL right? settings. Okay. Headless login. And that was in Google. here. And, and so this is going to be local, local host. host. 3000 slash Google, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, slash, sorry, slash um, uh, API slash auth slash Google. API slash auth slash Google. All right. Um, and now we have to work on authentication logic. This is good. Let's save this page. Okay. Let's try and I see you again. just shot me a link in Discord. Do we need that? I shot you a link in Discord to the docs um, from uh, WP GraphQL has this login, which is essentially what we're following. Okay. So we've already got our we've already got our logic. We don't have to write it from scratch. We're just going to copy paste from here, talk it through as we do it for uh, okay. brand sake. All right. Cool. Except we're just going to put all of this in one in one uh, uh, one file instead of the way I've got it set up over here. Oh, uh, so we don't want, so we do or we don't want this. No, in yeah, save this. TypeScript. Okay. That's all fine. Uh, we're going to have to import it, fetch API. Okay. All right. Yep. Um, we're going to want a session handler. Um, basically, we've got, we've got three things down yeah. below. Okay. And so you're saying we can put all this. Uh, yeah, I just this copy all this. 3A, in the same 3B. File. All right, well, let me let me do that and so and we'll copy this session handler. And I, did we need to install iron session somewhere? Yeah, along the um, oh yeah, we should have done that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. well, let's uh, good call kill this. Yeah, I remember seeing that somewhere. Yarn install people watching at home, you can uh, iron session, iron dash session. Uh, people watching at home, you can use any session provider that you want to. Add to oh, yarn add. To Oh, no, it's okay. just it's yarn add iron session. Uh ha, ha. I should have yeah, gone with what I was comfortable add. with. Mm -hmm. Iron session. All right, that got us farther than the last time. Okay, while it's doing that, let me get the rest of this. So we've got session handler. Um to provider specific API routes. We need this as well, right? Yeah, this is this is gonna be our last. Okay. For people asking why this is multiple components, because it's drier and it's easier to test and it's reusable. So, so yeah, so now let's just import the uh, components that we actually need. Okay. And all right. So what do, what do I, I just, yeah, uh, just, let's just go to the top and start. And as we see them, we'll start at them. So just go to the top. We've got our fetch API. Keep going. Get iron all sessions. Right. We Get need. iron session. Just type it in. It should, uh, Import get iron session. Yeah, there we go. It's this that might just be a TypeScript thing. No, that's. Um, I Do just, we need this as well? Um, what are you looking at? Iron it's options. Iron options. We should have just copied it over. Okay, so we're good. Yeah. We're, oh yeah, we're iron good. options One right more. there. And all the way at the bottom. With the, yeah. Iron with iron session. session API route. Okay. Now that, that's going to be. You guys want to see too. the iron session docs? Take a look online. Um, again, you don't have to use iron session. I just find it really easy to use. Yeah. <laughs> Where's that URL or that import coming from? I'll tell you. Um, it is coming from iron session slash next. Okay. And what was it called? Sorry. It's iron with session. iron session. API with right? iron session. With iron session. Is that a second package I might need? Do I need to install no, iron no, session no. slash next? No, from iron session slash next. It's just a package in it. Okay. Well, let me grab this then. All right. Cool. All right. So it looks like so that took just... boot it up. 
You want to talk through some of this? Yeah, sure. For everybody. Just, uh, yeah. Uh, start at the bottom and work our way up. Probably. Makes okay. Sense. All, right. All right. So first off, what iron session does basically is it wraps um, your information in a, pa um, in a server side cookie. So it can't be leaked. So it's basically managing all your session information. Um, if we go to, oh, you didn't, did we not copy iron options over? Um, I don't know that. I That's mean, there's, uh, there it is. Oh, no, it's there. All okay. right. Um, what, something that we need for, um, for iron options, um, is a password is a cookie password that we're just going to add to our ENV. Okay. Um, so if you scroll back up to iron options, just before you switch, um, iron options, just copy right. secret cookie password. So we know what we're calling it. Okay. All right. And now let's add it to our .env file. Uh, .env file. And what does this need to be? Just anything some... you want it to be. Yeah. In real life, you should. Yeah. I don't know. You use make a salt, salt or... or something. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So secret cookie password. All right. We got and that then... now. Yeah. And so basically, what happens? Scroll back to the bottom. All right. Um, our ASIC handler function. That's just an XJS thing. Uh, but what we're doing is we're basically sending the response that um, um, that our OAuth provider sends us to WP GraphQL. That's what okay. this whole thing is. So scroll scroll up slightly. All right, get provider right. input, get the right. provider this the comes, request. Yep. This is what's sent to our endpoint. If it's a password, um, we're gonna need the username and password. We're just gonna use the same endpoint, I guess, for, for also okay. uh, password auth. And then default, which is any other OAuth provider, we're just grabbing the OAuth response. Um, states are optional. That's just an OAuth thing. We don't have to go through that. Um, and then once we have our input, we're going to scroll up. Okay. Higher. All right. We pass it to, to uh, WP GraphQL. That's the authenticate function. And then, and this is just the Iron Auth stuff, is we create a session in Iron Auth. We store our, our auth data. Okay. Um, our auth data. Because I saw that this be... was still you. Is this still using JWTs to some extent? And is exactly. that sort of what, what, using... what is, what's happening here? Is right. We're yeah. we're still authenticating with the JWTs, but the your your front end server gets back the JWT, wraps that in this HTTP cookie that then uses it to authenticate with the next server. Is that exactly? My kind of understanding that right. Exactly. A JWT is our okay. session management. So things are secure. And so people don't have okay. to keep on logging in through their OAuth provider to get onto their website. They log in okay. once, which says, okay, this OAuth provider is good for WordPress. And then WordPress without having to hit your OAuth provider. So if you're using something like Auth0, where you have to like pay for hits, you don't have to worry about that. Because until that, um, your refresh token expires, you can just keep on logging in with WordPress and not have to think about your your um your your um OAuth provider so yeah so that's that's that keep scrolling up All right. okay well and i'm just checking sean's mm -hmm. point out some stuff he said you did api auth slash google but the provider uh dot ts file is that api provider dot ts is that all right i think you mentioned it being a catch-all do we want to do the dot, uh, dot, yeah. dot provider uh, I don't think it's necessary. Um, oh, okay. Dot, dot, dot provider just means that if there's paths after it. Uh, for people who aren't so familiar with Next, those brackets mean that it's going like to we grab right the here. slug and turn it into a variable. Okay. Yeah. And do we so need that? that is. In fact, if you scroll down, um, sorry, I'm just, I'm glossing over all this. In, in the actual provider file. Oh, okay, in the actual provider file. Yeah, there should be. Where is it coming from? In the handler. All right. Provider request query. That's what that bracket is. So if it's auth slash Google, right, it's okay. going to show up or yeah, API auth. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. What did we say our endpoint was? What did we save it as? In the uh, we told it it was, uh, oh, let's just API slash auth slash Google. Okay, so we need a folder called auth and we need to move that file in. Okay, okay. So so Sean was right. Good catch, Sean. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Auth. All right, then we should be able to just drag this up here and then exactly. that's good. All right, cool. Yeah. API right, slash auth slash provider. Google. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Cool. All right. Yeah. So that's this function. That's this. And this is just our, our mutation. Oh, we should get some user fields. Uh, I don't know what we want. Uh, put in, I guess, your name. Name. Yeah, instead of the fragment. Okay. I gotcha. Remove fragment. The fragment's then... non existent. Okay. And we're good. All right. Okay. So, now so let's... If all of this is working. <laughs> Talent's writing poetry in the in the chat. Roses are red, violets are blue. There's a typo on line 32. Yes, it was. <laughs> threw it threw in an extra extra comma in there. Yeah, I'm here to help. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Iron options. Is this actually what we do? We want this to be iron options. Oh, it's just. I guess we'll see in a second. Things. It's okay. It's just a... oh, TypeScript. Oh, you know what? Um, while this is loading up, just go to TS config and maybe just let's turn that off. yet there's so many files and what do we want to do here just strict false where is that even at strict uh, line 19 false all right thank you and then jeff said i don't think there's a name field try display name yeah let's hit that display name all right. So now if we come back to, I guess this kicked us off, right? So let's go local host yeah, 3000, right? Just a okay. And then you want me to kick off the auth flow again? We'll see how far we get. Mm -hmm. You can't sign in to this app because it does not comply with da da da. Um, what? invalid request. Learn more about this error. I don't even. It's working on my machine. Ye uh, let's okay. see. Um, let me go into Must use so redirect so... URIs. Do we need it to be on HTTPS? Maybe. Yes, including using the HTTPS scheme. Oh, so in the redirect URI? Uh, go on to the back end. Okay. And just let's fully qualify that. All right. Just HTTP, right? Uh, if that's what we're running it on. Yeah. I mean, I don't have, I don't have, I don't think I have SSL on this yet. So let's. That's probably fine. I guess I didn't need to, didn't need to restart that because that's the back end, but let's try. Come on. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. So let's hit it. Hiring session, bad usage. Password must be at least 32 oh. characters long. Okay, so we actually have to do a large salt. So go to your .env file. Oh, uh, okay. .env. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it longer. <laughs> Make it longer. All right. Let's throw some numbers like in there. Clients and logos. Know. Make yeah, it bigger. We'll do some at symbols. All right. What did it complain about there? At symbols. Yeah, well, we're back 30, at the. 30, 30, I think we were just back at the. I just reloaded the same page. Oh. So let me. Log in. See, and this is why we want stuff All like this handling authentication. Logs. Yes. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, this stuff is just painful. All right. Password. That's 32 characters, right? I don't guess not. <laughs> Copy it and paste it again. <laughs> yeah. It's not... I mean, anybody got like wizard like math skills? Let's do this. And I've rebuilt this server, right? I mean, yarn dev. You want to try that one, David? If, if it's still saying it's not long enough. Yeah, let's. Okay. Well, we got a, a new error. Okay. 
can a query field display name on type user? Well, that's why so we guess, have graphical. Yes, let's come back in here. All right, let's bust open this query composer and see what we do have on user. All right, so I guess we could just get yeah, nice do, name. A nice name, yeah, let's do nice name, so. I mean, who knows if my, my user has a nice name. Uh, let's, well, we'll find out. Yeah. I guess okay, we can also so. just test it in the back end first. <laughs> we could. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's the way to go. Maybe that's the way to go. Uh, let's do users. Yeah, I guess what this would be like nodes. Yeah. And then nice name. Users, nodes, nice name. Nope, that's not all. Let's do name. Didn't we start with name? I thought we did, yeah. Demo content, Demo we're good. There we go. Okay, so let's Got do something. name. Name. All right, we're back here, right? Those were all. We'll let our, our server spin up and update that query. People watching this from the future, um, in general, yes, the goal true. of the of the front end headless experience is to handle all this boilerplate um, and long. Well, and that was my, that, that we was start my seeing point. Things was like, like turnkey themes. Like I'm showing you how yeah. to do this, but in theory, this is done for you and you're just installing a front end component people. Well, like, even the work the you've done now to wire all this stuff up. Like if I wasn't doing this live and I hadn't had, we hadn't had spent 10 minutes trying to teach me basic Git commands. Like, we would have gotten a lot more no time frame here. Okay, variable input of required type login input was not provided. Okay, let's go back um, to our file. What did we do wrong? Okay. Okay, we want to go to variable um, the provider input. Slide to the bottom. Okay, get provider get, input. Right, get provider, provider the request. Input. Oh, because we, we need to actually write what the provider is. We're provider to uppercase. Um, um okay so you know what we have typescript so yeah let's just do it the way it says to do it uh login import login provider enum and just const provider enum is login provider enum provider okay all right so you said we're going to import login provider enum yeah first thing right from yeah Login. Um, it's in the brat. Put it. Yeah, I guess it pops up for you. Perfect. GraphQL types. Um, okay, and then down here we're just replacing this, right? Or no, no, no. We want to do this. We want to do yeah, right over there. Login provider enum, and then Google, right? Yeah, or not Google. No, and no, I guess we, like we could force it for Google if we only have to support that. But let's make it seamless. Uh, okay. The provider, as in the variable that's being passed in. Oh, I see. Okay, so we're taking this, passing that in to the enum. I got gotcha. you. All right. Anything else you think we need to address here? This is just TypeScript um, well, ripen. Okay, so then, so then we should be good. All right. Login. This is so cool though. I mean, just the idea that this is how easy it would be to do Google social authentication is really neat to me. I mean, we're not even with the magic. What I was hoping to get through was the client side, which really, really shouldn't be done yet because it's not so safe, but it means you could use any, let's say next J auth, uh, sorry, next auth provider and just have it sync with your WordPress backend. What's going on now? Okay, so we're getting this error in here um where we're doing you know can http error http header sent cannot set headers after they are sent to the client um and then we're still at this i guess this is a wp graphql error right that's variable input of type of required type login input was not provided screw it right google change provider to capital google Capital Google. No, no, no. Get the get rid of the whole enum. We're wiring this for time. 
So okay. drop all, uh, login provider, sorry, this... sorry, login provider enum. Keep writing that. Oh, gotcha. And then dot right. Google. Okay. All right. Let's just scroll down before we run this one more time. Just make sure there's nothing else missing. Oh yeah, down in here. Yeah. Scroll okay. a little bit. Right. It's just returning the input. The input's being sent um, to the session handler. Go to the session handler. Okay, that was up here, right? Make sure I didn't put any boilerplate. Session handler, right? We've got our input. We're authenticating with our input. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, okay, all right. So we're gonna go to login. Uh, I don't know, you want me to... Start and start stop dev restart again, maybe because it's an API endpoint. Yeah. Well, I am sorry for everybody at home. This is brutal. Um, for no those worries, of you, no worries. Everybody, I think, is I, I'm very interested to learn more. I mean, just how easily we got all the components set up. That was nice. And we know that it is something small. That, I, that we're missing probably. Well, for people tuning in from the future, um, tomorrow I'll have um, the enum. final code. Say that one more time, Jeff. Login provider num is a is a type. You can't use that as a value. Dot Google makes it a value. Oh, it's in a num. So your hard so the, the thing it's complaining about is it's missing the input type that, that's right there on line eighty five. It doesn't seem to match what the type expects for the login input, and I'm pretty sure login input is a is a GraphQL input type for the login mutation. It's, it's something that's coming through um, with this plugin. Let's you know. Let's inspect it in graphical. That's why it's there. Okay. All right, All right, so what do we want to do? Click on, docs on, click on docs on the right. Okay, and then log in. And just type provider. Log in search. And input. this is what we want, login no, provider no, enum. We, no, or just login input. This one, right? Yeah. Yep. All right, we've got our provider. That's an enum. We've got our OAuth response, right? Those are both called. So why is it not getting sent? Provider is the only required field. Correct. Huh. Let's take a look the at the variable your set. Say that again. For that parameter variables we're up there on 22, where is that set? Is that being provided the variables from below? The variables from here, yeah. Yeah, from into authenticate. Variables, um, login input, it's the right type. Variables, yeah. Login input, it's required. That's what I was looking at. Because we had a typo here that Sean caught. So let's see. Let's go back to the session handler piece. It's higher up. Oh, it's higher up. Okay. Get provider input, session handler. Yeah, right. This should be a comma in this code example. That should right? be a comma. Rec, this, yes. this is our third argument for this function. All right. Yeah. So that's good. All right. And then this input. Get provider input was right here, right? Yeah, provider rack. Session handler. And this is just TypeScript griping. Here, do we want to return handler instead of session handler? Yes, 
if that's what it's called here. I mean, yes, we're not using, yes, we're not, we're not <laughs> using. Yes. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I'm not useless. Uh, oh, I got to waste some days on that. <sighs> so, so two code updates. There's, you got a typo. We got a typo here in this example. Yeah, and then that's what that looks like, right? Because this is that reference, yeah. and we're actually returning session handler with all that stuff right here from handler. So let's see. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. We let's see. Okay. Um, I'm gonna refresh this. Let me let me kill out some of these tabs so I can stay sane. The final right. code and step by step directions will be up uh, eventually with something that's actually working. Oh no, I didn't. Oh do come it. Let on. Me, let me kill it real quick. <laughs> Oh Let me kill it gosh, real quick. What's going on? I know. Yearn, yarn, yarn dev. Yeah, because I'm trying to think any. I'm, uh, let's take another scroll back here th through here and see if there's anything else that's unused. Authenticate. Switch over to your problems tab. We could ignore that instead of having to look for lines. Switch over to your problems tab. Yeah, where's that at? Your CLI. I'm done. Oh, Left there we side. go. Yeah, problems. Binding element. Okay. Log login care. clients we has any. Care. Yeah. Property okay, clients. Care about those. Does... None oh, of those. Oh, but we're missing okay. sprint. We're missing some. No, those were missing. Okay, we want to. Um, we want to import some. Um, some classes from uh, from WordPress's uh, internationalization. Um, uh, okay. So import. Import curly braces and then two underscores, underscore, underscore. Okay. Yep. And then just what, where the are we going? One, and we'll fix it. This so one? Just skip, oh, just skip, underscore, skip. underscore. Okay. Um, put a comma next to it. We're not actually done yet. Put a comma next to All it. All right. Sprint F. And this oh. is actually a bug with the package, but drop build types from the end of the. Uh, Jeez, come on, build types. Okay. Drop that and the backslash. There we go. Okay. okay. All right. Unknown word. This is all just TypeScript. Six. Has any user does not exist. Hold on. What was that? And that oh, could totally be property user does not exist on type no, iron no, session. Because we're not because we're not typing things. Okay. Okay, okay. we should be good. All right. I hope. Let's do this. Yarn. Yearn. I yearn for this to work. Yarn dev. Note to self, include the imports in my code samples. Doing code samples like that is tough. I mean, I will say it is tough to know how much is enough. So I don't envy you. I mean, it's it's more than that. It's I'm embarrassed of my friend in code, so I want it to be as concise as possible. What is yeah. going on? Well, Here, let me ask you a question. Yeah, because we're at we're at three, yeah, three eighteen. Um, Oof. yeah, and we're still. Well, everybody still... use this plugin. It's it's great. It, it totally works. Easy, easy to set up. No, don't don't even think about it. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. This is great work. Uh, I'm excited to see, like, because I've I've definitely watched you post about its evolution in Discord and you know the WP GraphQL Slack and stuff. So I'm like really excited to see. Even though we didn't get it working all the way, I'm excited to see at what all. potential we didn't it has get it at all. <laughs> Well, well, what about the username and password? Was... Could we? Should we try that? Oh yeah, sure. I don't, I, I, well, sure. I, let's I don't... let's try that one. Okay. Yeah. Do we have well, time. <laughs> I mean, I don't have anything else to do for the rest of the day, so we could we could certainly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's spend it's, some more it's time. ten thirty here. I'll be up for another four or five hours. 
<laughs> See, I'm gonna have to have dinner in within four or five hours. But for <laughs> real, if y'all, if you're hanging out and you want to peace out, like do so. If not, we can we can we can keep it going for a little while. Um don't feel like Let's you see. have to hang out here just to ask questions, by the I, way. I want to figure um, it out. I'm on Slack. I'm this on out Discord. Now. Yeah. So let's, you know, let's right. mock this mutation on the back end. Hold on. Okay. All right. Let's mock this. Well, mutation let me create a end. user real quick. Let me create us a new user. Yeah. yeah. Bye, Callan. Thanks for your help with Git and stuff. Yeah. Somebody's saying Thanks, console log and input. Yeah. Um, username. I don't know. We'll just do Jeff. Test user. Sure. Yeah. Jeff um, at so Jeff dot Jeff. Copy this password. Let me put this in Discord. All right. Add new user. And doesn't matter. It can be a subscriber, right? It doesn't matter our yep. our thing. Maybe better now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh okay. So we want to go to GraphQL. We're mocking the mutation. Yeah. So mutation we'll login new mutation maybe full screen this for a second just so yeah sure we've got some space some merges yes thank you there we go um and I guess we don't need that all right so here is our mutation input right we don't want we want a we want a password provider okay so this is That's just going to be using. Or do we want Password. to try it with Google first? How what would we pass Google through this mutation? We'd we'd pass the we'd pass the uh, payload that comes back from the authorization URL. That's all we're doing in our API endpoint is we're trying okay. to handle that server side in our app. But okay, um, and so what we can log so we that out that? somewhere? Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, yeah. Let's just let's scaffold this first. So providers okay. Google, and then we need the OAuth uh, response is the next. Uh, parameter in here OAuth response and okay yeah set that as a variable so it's easy to copy in oh oh i can't type response and remember to add it to the to your actual this thing name. Oh, oh, awesome. uh, yeah Then do I need to pass in like a type for this in here? Uh, yeah, hover over OAuth response. It'll tell you what the type is. And this one? Uh, no, where it's, yeah. No, is it not? Because you already put it in. So just type in OAuth response in the Explorer and it'll pop up for you. Uh, go to the Documentation Explorer, right tab. Oh, gotcha. OAuth, if I can hit the H. Response is this one. There we go. Yep. So just copy that over. All right. And what I want this. Oh, I want this, right? OAuth oh, provider exactly. response input. Okay. That's the type that's set up. And let's just add our user fields as the response. Is it required? It is not required. Um, in case there's a bad response or or whatever it is. And also because um, w, uh, GraphQL does not currently handle um, union inputs. So the way it works is providers required and then different types of um, providers will require a different input. So password providers actually uses a credentials object. I was just asking um, in case these... you needed to put an explanation. Uh, for no, me. no, we don't. I'm just explaining as we go along. But we're good. Okay. Um, write some response fields. Uh, All right. And, uh, so what, this is gonna be what the user User off token. Uh, off token? If, yep. Um, okay. It's not off token. Oh, no, it's not under user. It's it's next to user. Same level. Okay. It, the token comes from the act of logging in. Gotcha. That's how to think about it. Off token. Okay. You know, refresh token so you don't have to keep on logging in every time. Refresh token. Um, and then if we wanted user data, we could add it here, but we don't really need it. Okay. All right, we've got our mutation set up. Now let's, um, what are, how are we gonna do this? Um, go to the API endpoint, uh, the, that file we created, API auth provider. Okay. All the way at the bottom. 
All right. Um, let's. Um, how would we log it? Uh, yeah, do we want to just throw? throw it? Yeah, throw, throw. Yeah. See what happens. Um, we right, might want that's... to disable the other logging so we can actually find this. It should appear in so, your CLI. Uh, yeah, I'm I know here. it'll appear in a CLI, but so are millions of other things. So I'm thinking we should maybe disable our other CLI stuff so we can find it easily. Where's that at? Um, go to plugins. All right, this is a Faust feature, so scroll up. Oh, SRC plugins. We're deep. SRC components, right? We don't need anything in there. Plugins. Plugins. Okay. All right. And just scroll down, um, right, to HTTP link and just comment out that fetch line. Uh, we're talking about 42. here. No, we're talking line 42. Okay. Yeah, just comment that out. That's our verbose headers that we don't need right now. All right. All right. Now we have to restart dev for this. Okay. And basically that's what we're doing, right? So we're, the plan here yeah. is we're going to log in with Google, go through the thing. This should log us out the payload that we get back from that OAuth And response. then we're going to manually put it into Copy GraphQL. that into GraphQL. Okay. Yeah. Right. We're doing manually what our endpoint should be doing if, if I knew how to code better. All right. Well, we get some stuff. So okay. We get, we get there that. There we go. Copy the, copy the OAuth response All into... Right. Uh, just the OAuth response. We don't need the whole thing. But... Oh, okay. Uh, and do we want what? Just this object? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because that's we're passing it. All right. All right. And Great then variables. what? This is oh. uh, open parentheses. Yeah. Yeah. And then with with quotes OAuth first. Yeah. response. And then Paste. this. And then we need another closing curly. We also I guess need this to maybe. Add... Everything needs to be double quotes. So yeah. Okay. So also state. Well, Ooh, that is a, that is long. I know. We got just just need some more screen real estate. Yeah. Close the query composer, and you get more screen real estate. Yes, yeah, smart. Boom. I mean, I'm. For people watching at home, around an hour before this session started, um, my dog broke my laptop, and I'm on a backup with a 13-inch screen. So if you see me <laughs> leaning in and keep on squinting, that is why. <laughs> and that's also why y'all got me as the pilot here. And and uh, that it. was a strategic decision, so I wouldn't have to code <laughs> on the front end. That's what happened. And I am sticking with the story. <laughs> uh, and so, what do we? This is give me. Do, do I need a? Dollar sign in That's, front of this thing. It's nope. a point of error. It comes. It'll go away. Okay. Just, yeah, know. just run it. All right. And all right. there we go. Well, we okay. have logged so, in. All right. So, so we know right. that part's working. Let's copy right? these so, like, off and refresh tokens, just okay. so we have them in case we want to not have to go through this whole thing again. So, copy them. Okay. Them. I don't know. Just uh, Where, Discord or something. I'll, I'll yeah. I'll throw them in Discord. Let's do that. Come on. Get. Well, I'll just do them one at a time. That does want me to copy both. <laughs> It's angry. Interesting. Does that tell token is gonna like become invalid in like 15 minutes? The refresh token will not. The off token will. Yeah. If I could get refresh token, I'm not sure why it's like won't let me copy this. Oh, no. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. All of it. It's All of it. Yeah. Okay. All right. All we right. got that on and a just... clipboard somewhere. All right. And just to show so... what it looks like with credentials. Um, we don't have to do any of that flow. Um in my mutation, or you know what? Let's okay, create a back. new mutation below it. Below it, okay. Yeah, All right. mutation, let's call it password mutation. All right. Okay, let's call this variable uh, credentials.
Okay. We'll figure out the then... code later. It's going to look the same. It's going to be login input, right? The provider type is going to be password. Why password are not credentials? Because naming things is hard, people, and you've got to choose between WordPress users and just, you know, sensibilities. WordPress calls it a password. Password, okay. I don't know why. And then our credentials variable is going to be over here as credentials. Yep. I see. Okay. Right. And we can put our auth token and refresh token below that. Gosh, look how smoothly it's all going now that we don't have to deal with the front end. Okay, so then we want to do the same thing right here. Auth token and then refresh token. Yeah. Okay. And now as our query variables, let's replace those out. Okay. You can leave them there and just add the other ones in. Oh, yeah, it won't okay, throw an error nice. for having variables that we don't need. Yeah, it won't. Okay, so let's do, so we want you to do what? Extra in, the, in the top object, yeah. Credentials. You said so there was an extra or something. The, you've got to be inside the double. Got double two record. curly braces. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. I see. I see. I see. Okay, so I just pop down here. Then we'll do well, credentials. And then what is credentials going to be? Um, right. Username. Uh, username. And, yeah. Username. Password. Yep, username is Jeff. How do I know it's Jeff? Because you work in WordPress. Yeah. And then Jeff and Jason, next... man. Every I'm thinking about changing my name. <laughs> the J's. The J's we're representing. For real. All right. And then the yeah, the G, the G Jeff. All right. And so we want to run now. Comma What's up? Comma on Comma. Line five. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then we get, you said the error that's just going to be annoying. I don't want to save this web page. Okay. But why is it not showing our second mutation? Because we didn't put the type. Uh, uh, let's yeah. search what the type is. Okay. All right. Just type credentials. I need to do capital yep. C. No, no, it was there. It was there. Oh, login Second. input dot credentials. Okay, so credentials is a password provider response input. Verbose, password but at least it's consistent. Password provider response input. All right, then we get password mutation. Cool. All right, so if we click that. And same that way, we can we get... use our auth and refresh tokens. Okay. Um, for people who aren't familiar with service side auth, and because we're not actually demonstrating this in the app, what you want to your auth token, as um, Jeff Taylor mentioned earlier, expires expires quickly, and you want it to expire quickly. You don't want that to get around. The way it works is you store your refresh token long term, and you use your refresh token to get a new auth token. So let's just add a new mutation below the one that we created. Okay. All right. Let's call it mutation refresh um, refresh auth token. All right, and then, then that's going to get off token. And we'll worry about the type in a second. It's going to get the refresh token, actually. Oh, yeah, good yeah, call. <laughs> Let's not confuse ourselves. Yeah. You're like, what's an off token? Um, All right, the mutation is going to is just called refresh token. Oh, that's nice. All right, our input is refreshed. Uh, squiggly. Um, color oh, yeah. Okay. All right. And, and what's what's going in here? Refresh, refresh token. Be, yeah. Is a string. And look at that. It's just a string. Right. Nope, not over there. Refresh token. There you put the variable, and above it you put the type. Okay. All right. So this is going to be a dollar sign refresh token. And I believe it's a non-null string. Yes, it's capital string. So this is re required point. string exclamation point. Okay. All right. And all that returns from this is the auth token. All right. Why? Because you should not be using your refresh tokens to actually get user data. 
That is a security no-no. Why I, that I don't know. All right, let's run the mutation or well, let's throw in a refresh token. Okay. So you know, just for funsies, let's use our the one we copied from before. Let's use our um... okay. Uh, so we'll do this and then we'll do a refresh token. I guess this needs to be, yeah. Refresh token. And this is just gonna be a value, um, right? Yeah. It's not an object. Yeah, it's just a string. Yep. It's just a string. Okay. Copy that over we'll to Discord. Snag the one we copied. Yep. Okay. Just double checking that. Uh, get to the end. He doesn't want to get to the end. Let's see. You can make it with the. Nah, we'll just assume it's good. Yeah, let's. Assume. It doesn't complain. <laughs> Refresh auth token. Well, we got back an and auth look token. Look at that. So, We've I mean, got a new auth okay. token. Now, what do you do with auth tokens? Auth tokens you add to your header um, as bearer space and then you put yeah. in the auth token okay that and so does... explain can we can we dig into mm -hmm. like how that works with your plugin right because that's what we would do with typical jwt stuff is it that doesn't how change. does okay that doesn't, that doesn't change. change you're adding them to your headers in your front end as always we recommend it to we um i and in general security experts recommend that you put it on a server side route so you're not leaking your credentials refresh okay. tokens use store Somewhere there's again safe server size, ideally a uh, secure cookie. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then what you're going to do is in if we go back to our app, even though we're not actually using it, um, go to uh, where would it be lib? Um, yeah, lib, and then go to the fetch oh, API sorry. function. Yeah, fetch API. Okay. All right. And then as you see here, um, right, we've got this headers thing and all you would do is headers and then you would write bear whatever and pass it in obviously okay. if you're using apollo or something else um the way you would add headers is specifically different but uh go to line 11 all right okay let's just drop dot 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 headers so people see what it looks like um right um, what do you want me to delete it yeah yeah just delete it i just want people to have a visual of what this looks like uh, okay add a new line all right capital a author comma sorry comma first and then yeah, yeah. All right. Single Capital quotes. A. Sorry, wrap it. Yeah. Capital A, lowercase authorization. Yep. Uh, I'm going to complain right. about you using quotes. Well, we're not actually going to use it. I just want people to see what it looks like. All right. And then um, this now we're going like... to interpolate. So, yeah. Exactly. Capital B for bearer. Space. And, um, dollar, and then our a dollar sign going. There we go. Yeah, our auth token. So this is not in the function. If you were using something like Iron Auth, and what will be in the example is we'd be getting it from the server side session and passing it in. Okay. Um, other ways to do it, you'd be doing it that way. But this is this code is how you tell WordPress now that we're using tokens to log in and refresh. Um, in theory, and what will also be in the example online is we would have a separate endpoint to just handle refreshing tokens and checking um, their expiration dates. And I'll put an example of that that actually works um, online. But but in general, this is the flow of our server-side authentication. Um, okay. There's one real quick thing I just want to show and have everybody imagine. Yeah, um, sure, let me leave this out. Yeah, we don't care about any of this. Um, but see how much quicker we went now that we're dealing with backend stuff. For, I love I love headless, and I spend all of my time like not dealing with the headless part. It's uh, it's quite ironic. All right. So, yeah. Okay. So that's cool. It's, yeah. And so really, what 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 we diagnose is that it's the the something error something wrong in our front end code. Right. Okay. Okay. And it was really in between this, right? Because we got back the right provider input from Google. We and just it weren't relaying it to the session, the session handler stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But, but one last thing before before um, I have to give the mic over because it is getting late. Um, let's go back to our back end. Okay. Um, a question that I get asked all of the time. We can clear all of this out. Um, all of our cool. history out. Oh, and you want to um, just in the, in the I mean, you want to stay in the IDE? I don't care. We're going to both the IDE and the sessions, whichever direction okay. we're going to go. All right. Um, a yeah, question we'll that I get asked about a lot is how you handle something like 
next J, um, like next auth or any sort mm -hmm. of client side authentication. Um, server side auth is hard. Um, as you see, there's only a couple providers um, that work out of the box. You'd have to, and I've got docs in the thing, but you'd have to basically either use um, the generic OAuth 2 um, provider or create your own. But let's say you're a front end dev, you don't want to have to deal with the PHP. That's why that's why you moved into headless. So we can use what is something that's called a site token to basically force log in our users on the back end. This is really not safe. So we have to set up a couple of things for security measures um, in order to make sure that it's safe. But in a pinch, if you really, really, really need to support client side login, let's just quickly show how it works. So let's go to the settings okay. in our graphical settings. Couple of things we have to do first. Again, apologizes for the UX. Top right, click show advanced settings. All right. All right. Scroll all the way to the bottom. First thing we have to do is restrict our endpoint. Um, we want to block unauthorized domains at the bottom. Okay, block unauthorized right. domains. Right. Save. All right. Save access control settings. We don't care about the rest of it right now because we're just using the back. Okay. Now that we've blocked unauthorized domains, what that means is that the only people who can use our GraphQL endpoint are people on our authorized list. By default, that's whatever we set up over here. We're not adding anything right now because we're sticking with the back end, So we don't care about it. Okay, um, okay. Now but like right here, we would add Yeah, we would add local host. Domains. Yeah, we would add okay. local host. If we were using Faust to, um, um, to change the front end, we would click add site URL to access control, um, allow origin. A lot of this, but not everything, um, like is similar with uh, with GraphQL cores. The long term is to at least get these settings working and compatible with that plugin, even though we okay. won't take advantage of their login mutations. But just so you know where we're headed. Okay, now let's scroll up. Now that we've done this, all right, let's go to site token. All right, and we're going to enable it. And what this site token does is we're basically creating our own unique header key, and we're creating a site secret. And with this header key and site secret, we're basically saying we can log in as anybody. So for our header key, let's, I don't know, put in something fun and unique. Okay, so like, I don't know. I don't know. More fun than X my site token. X, don't use this in production unless you know yeah. what you're doing. All right. And then this can just be any value, right? Yeah, hi, I'm Jeff, <laughs> anything. Yeah. All right. I should remember it, right? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. All right, the next thing we need, um, is the user meta key. We're doing a lookup. So how are we going to look it up? Um, it could be any property that, that gets sent back to you from the front end. If you're using next auth, it could be, right, username, email ID. It could be a special, um, oh, okay. uh, your Facebook ID that you're saving as a custom um, as a custom endpoint. But for now, let's just uh, put in your login because we know what that is. It's okay. Jeff. All right. Let's hit save provider. And now let's go back to our graphical ID. All right, we're gonna create a new login mutation, same way as okay. before. Mutation, and what do we wanna call this one? My uh, login. My or login site login or something. Only do this from a server endpoint login. Yeah, okay. All right, the um, input is... Um, Oh, let's, I don't know. We'll fill that out later. We have to look it up in the docs. You guys just, didn't know you don't actually have to name it, right? You can just put, well, we want to, well, we want to pass in the variable. No, you can still do that too. You don't have to put the, Ooh. name. Oh, okay. Cool. Really? Anonymous mutation. Dude, I've been doing this for three years <laughs> and I never noticed that. Thank you. Oh. See, this is what I'm talking so about. What this did is we say? the this community is the, right here. Yeah, exactly. Like, I didn't know a thing about GraphQL when I started. I didn't know a thing about headless. I mean, I knew a little bit, but like but you none of this and it's one. people. That's all we need. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Because right, otherwise, so I wouldn't know which one to do. Yeah. Okay. Login. I token. And we said we were going to figure out what that type was in a second. And then right. login, input. Right. Our provider is going to be site token. Provider, site token. And then we're basically passing an identity key. So I think it's called identity. Let's see. Ooh, yep, it's called identity, okay. and I believe it's just a string, but we'll find out in a second. Let's search in the docs once you type that in. Okay, well, let me... Oh, no, sorry, we're missing something. We also need the... Yeah, there it is. Identity, we're passing an identity word. Why are we not sending the site token through this? Because the site token is saved as a header. 
and it's sent from the server side because we want this okay. to be secure. If somebody gets your site token doing this, they can authenticate as any user, including an admin. That would be bad. That would be bad. This is literally just an example using Next.js, um, Next Auth. The reason we rely on Next Auth is because we. And so, when knows what explain to me, yeah, explain to me. Yeah. Okay, so. I Explain to me well, why the way this would work. This, yeah, and, the, and, so the way this would work in your front end app, right, is I want to use some sort of client side authentication, but I still want that to be connected with WordPress. If they're making a WooCommerce order, it's over there for pumping things into a CRM, any sort of thing. We need a way to sync um, our front um, our front end auth with our backend. So what we would do is we would log in. We would authenticate client side and rely on the fact that they pass authentication to then call this mutation. So that's okay. the way it would be set up. If if this mutation is getting called in the server side, and again, it's hard to visualize now. So it's like we've got a, a whole separate authentication system. Like say say we were like doing Firebase or something. Like exactly. I've used that. Like I have Firebase auth installed. They authenticate with Firebase, which I think yeah. is just JWTs. And then once they've done that, then I say, okay, now I know your it's, email, and then I'm going to use this to make some other to link it to request. the WordPress. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to link it to okay. WordPress to create a new WordPress user, right? And we gotcha. can put our auth and refresh token over here, right? Just like as always. Okay. Token refresh token. Okay. Um, uh, and oh wait, can we? Um, Jeff Taylor, does graphical let us set headers yet in um in the back end? If not, we'll just do this on post. What do you mean if uh, you said just can I, Yeah, no. can I set a custom header? No, so that you know what? No, Let's actually copy this over to Postman. Uh, yeah, you have to put in Postman. Okay. Which means because we limited um, our auth headers. Um, Let's see if this lets me in. Agree. Oh, come on. I don't want to do any of this. Oh, come on. Let me bail. Give me one second. Let me yeah. just spin up Firefox. I'm already in there. It's just different Google account. Postman. Okay. Let's do WordPress. Dude, it's been forever since I've been in Postman. I've been using something called HTT, HTTP Pi a lot Whoa. lately. What's that? Yeah, it's kind of like, it's, I mean, the same thing as Postman. So I guess that's nothing crazy. All right, so we're going to do post. post. Um, I want to hit this URL. Then slash, slash graphical. Graph, GraphQL. Yep. And then what do we want to do? We, we said we need some headers, right? Yeah, our headers, we're going to put our custom header in. Okay. Let me, uh, I guess I need to send this mutation, right? Yeah. So copy that. Over. Okay. All right. And that's just going to get dumped in the body. We're all... uh, GraphQL. No, two more down. Oh, there is. A, oh, maybe I need to come back then. Cause like they don't have this <laughs> for GraphQL. Oh, wow. That's nice. That's way yeah, nice. In our, in our variables. Thinking. Um, it runs introspection oh, no. too, so I can give you type anything. Oh wow, that's nice. Yeah. So in our variables, let's just write identity is Jeff. Okay. Right, that was your login name, right? Or was it your? I think so. I think it's lowercase. I'm assuming it's. I hope it's case sensitive. It should be. All right. All right. And then and the last thing anything is else? Our headers. Our auth, yeah, uh, headers. Uh, so let's go back. I forgot what that was. Um, the password was hi, I'm Jeff. <laughs> site token, Jeff site. <laughs> I need to go shut down all this stuff. So the, the, the head, the value, the key is this, and then the value is this, right? Is that what we're saying? Yep. Okay. And there's one last thing we have to do. Oh, no. All right. All right. We just have to add Postman as one of our allowed um, authorized domains. So scroll all the way to the bottom. Postman doesn't domains. have a domain. No? It would oh, because it's server side. Great. So let's just force yeah. add an origin. Let's spoof an origin. So let's, yeah. 
Um, go back to authenticate. No, go back to the headers in Postman. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, let's just headers in Postman. Um, capital O origin. And just put in your site URL, your backend site URL. Okay. With an HTTPS, yeah. Or you could like spoof localhost 3000. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Did we add localhost to our authorized domains though? Oh, that worked. And though. there we go. And there we go. Okay. And basically, in addition to what we actually did, in theory, you'd put like your user information over here. Um, and if you were using something like Next Auth, you'd then pump that in to their whole user system. And then suddenly okay. you're syncing both your, your front end data and your back end. If you wanted to get super fancy, that means you could also add some sort of update mutation that runs after um, their sign in call. So you can actually update the, the user metadata. Um, if you wanted to get even more fancy, you could possibly create a new user if the existing user doesn't exist. Because as okay. a security as a security risk uh, thing, you cannot create a new user like this. If you saw in the back end, there was no options to create a new user because the only way somebody's getting on is like we're trying to make this as strict as possible. Mm -hmm. If this wasn't a big request and if there wasn't such a gap between um, feature parity between traditional, well, this, this, this would then. not be in here. Yeah, big asterisk on this. Like yeah, what, what if yeah. I put an asterisk in the additional domains, though? Oh, they will not allow that. I don't believe. <laughs> I, I, that. That. <laughs> I really all of them. I think it's smart enough not to do that. <laughs> if not, it I should won't be. test it. I won't test it on recording. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And so, so yeah, I, I have a couple flow. other questions. Okay. <laughs> Ask okay. Away. I've got a couple other questions. Yeah. So, like, I see this set authentication cookie option. What does that allow me to do? Is that all? That, that that sort of. That just allows, yeah, allows somebody you to share to... the session between your front end app and, and your back end. back end. Okay. Yeah. That's all if that you is. have like a use case where you had some stuff that like, I don't know, some paywall stuff, but then maybe you still wanted somebody to administer their, I don't know, like account details that... or whatever inside of WordPress. That's kind of the use case for that. I, I feel like, I there's, feel like a, use there's a methodology for, for that, that that's been created, but I yeah. guess it work. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly what what Jeff is saying. Like, I feel like the real use case for this is if the people is if the people that you're logging in with are administrators. Um, okay. This was this option was created before Faust added their whole auth thing, which between you and me, like, I'm still having bugs and issues with. That's by the way where we're using okay. yeah, this fetch API sure. function and not the built-in Apollo auth client. Um, okay. One day, hopefully, um, that'll get fixed. I know they're working on it. Like Blake and uh, everybody over there. Are just yeah like yeah words. and i mean if you got feedback on that definitely oh yeah we're we, we talk. pass yeah. pass yeah. pass it along I, um because yeah, there's we, we talk not, i bitch <laughs> yeah the, the, the foul stuff is not as advanced as this like I, I don't and clearly it's just the username password combo well so like, i, I, don't I mean the problem right now is that the faust client isn't hookable so like you're limited to using basically they create they have their own auth endpoint uh, yep. that's doing some sort of like basic credentials pass uh, pass back and forth if I'm uh, not mistaken. It doesn't matter how they're doing it, but like mm -hmm. I, I, in theory, they're working on hooks. So like we can extend it and then things like this will just be, oh, you download, you download a Faust experimental plugin and suddenly you've got social off. That's the, okay. Okay. That's the long-term goal. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be a cool future. Future I am here for. Um, okay, cool. So any, any th wrapping up thoughts, any, any questions anybody's got? I know we've sort of thinned out the group here um, and we've been hanging out for a while, but yeah, this was uh, yeah. a lot of fun. I learned a ton. I learned a ton. Uh, and that's part won. of the reason why we do, do the stuff. Yeah. Go but for it. Jeff. This is why I don't do front end work. Everything that you saw, like I do it if I have to, but by the way, I don't know if you've seen, I've posted on Twitter. I've posted in the Slack. I am always looking for front end developers that I can send clients to because I don't want to touch this stuff. Right. I'm the guy who loves headless, but doesn't want to use it. I, I don't know. I'm right Sorry. <laughs> we'll talk. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Making connections. Making we'll talk, connections. We'll talk. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I said one question is, does this run side by side with JWT auth or is this replacing auth? This so replaces to... this has to currently both replaces JWT auth and and cores. Um, just to get this proof of concept working now that it's at 1.0, 
um, my goal is to try to, and I guess I'll coordinate with you because I don't know why I thought it was by Jason uh, when I spoke with him, but um, the goal is to make those compatible. The reasons that they don't work now is because the schema shape, um, as well as the methods themselves, but the schema shape specifically is very different. And as, as you yeah, personally that, so I have an issue use working in, um, I just personally like struggle to work in repos that don't like do uh, PSR4. That's on me, but my goal now that 1.0 is up is to get those working. Like you'll know specifically, you'll know specifically that in this plugin, um, a lot of the WP GraphQL core settings are actually not in here. And that's because the goal is to actually phase out what I'm doing locally and to rely on that. Uh, right, that's, that's, you I and mean, I will I'm, collaborate I now that I know that you're I'm the I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, those are, I, I understand what you're going with, for with that, but the thing is, well, mm -hmm. like, I'm not working on cores actively. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm not sure what the. I know there's developers using it, but I'm not sure what the what the maintenance is on that. Uh, well, so let me let me let me pitch it let me pitch it like this. There are so many gaps right now between what we can do in traditional WordPress and what we can do in headless. And personally, and this is about like everything that I work on in this space is trying to not reinvent the wheel. The only yep. reason that JWT tokens are in here is because I couldn't make it work with the existing implementation because of the schema shape. And as soon as I figure out a way past that, then it's gone because we should all be working together to, to make these extensions like work well and get it to a point where it can be folded in theory, at least basic stuff, not like WooCommerce, which it has to be its own thing, but like JWT off, um, client um, locking down, that should be part of core. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Yeah, we just have we just have to experiment to get there. Same thing with with WP Engine's great work on um, on blocks, which replaces even Jason's effort and a bunch of other. Um, I think um, shoot, what's his name? The guys who do Fuxed. Um, Peter. Yeah, um, like there's oh no, well Peter Peter's plugins like already out, but there's like a couple new block implementations oh, out there. The Funkhouse one. Yeah, Funkhouse. That's what it is. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Um, so there's Drew also Baker. great. Yeah, yeah, Drew, Drew. Baker, there, that's his name. Baker. Yeah, Drew. Drew's a great yeah. guy. Um, so, like, all of these plugins are experimenting until we can figure out what the ideal schema is to bring into core. And I think that's how I look and approach all the stuff that I'm doing. And a and lot we of didn't even, plugins were we like uh, the FSC stuff either. Well, yeah, that's that's what my whole <laughs> FSC, plugin, FSC plugin is, is just experimenting with a way that we can make this work, specifically dynamic blocks. Like, my goal is that WordPress now create like it's got a horrible API for getting data out right, of the um, um, out of a block format. But like once we solve that, what's currently left is dealing with dynamic blocks. Like WordPress creates an entire front template. There is no reason, there is no reason that you shouldn't be able to just run next start on any project, have a fully working feature feature complete example of WordPress. And then as a developer, you can work past that to add new, to add new features, to create a new DX, to go above and beyond what you can do with traditional WordPress. Because I don't know about the rest of you, but like the reason why I'm here and I'm in this space is because I kept on trying to do complex stuff with WordPress and I just had to be fighting plugins and fighting for control mm -hmm. of the front end. And every time there was an update, I have to do regression testing and like none of that's fun. None of that's fun. So my goal is to get that baseline done. So all of you front end people can build these crazy experiences that I can then use as a customer consumer, because as you see, I freaking hate it. <laughs> I'm sort of the same way as something like I did. I'm doing both sides of it. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. I do I, I I... a lot of the front end stuff too. But the thing is like a lot of the, like a lot of the plugins you mentioned, they were made so far, so long yeah. ago. And mm -hmm. WP GraphQL has gone through so many changes. Like, like JWT yeah. auth and cores were made long before 1.0 was even exactly. And like uh and, and, and same with the original GraphQL with the original Gutenberg plugin that Peter made. Like they were all made yeah. well before. Yeah. So they so what they they did tend to just need updating. And because like initially, like like JWT off the initial creation was Jason made it, and but Jason's still making all the other things. Yeah, <laughs> it's Jason. It's hard to maintain. Yo, WP game. Engine, WP Engine, you need to hire somebody to work with Jason. This is ridiculous. 
All right. Like I love to rephrase. It's amazing that you're all investing in this space. Like really, really props. You want to speed this up. Jason is one person working on 25 things plus your clients. You need to figure out how to clone him. All right. Buy like, I don't know, like an air fry pizza maker and just like wait until a bunch of more Jason show up. Because this ecosystem needs to go. Like, I'm loving the WP content blocks plugin. I'm already using that in production. That oh is yeah, it's good. great. Okay, I, that's I, what I, this is using. I'm loving that. That yeah. like that's what. So, so I, yeah. I think keep up the good work. <laughs> like yeah. we're trying. I mean, it's 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 tough <laughs> from the inside. I mean, it just feels like everything is moving in five thousand directions all at once. Yeah. And, and so, I'm like, for me, I'm Faust. like, oh, Faust is moving and WP GraphQL and content blocks and now blocks. And it, it's it's a lot, but I don't disagree with you. Yeah, if we had more Listen. Jason Balls, this would all go way faster. And you guys open source Faust, and I've been cherry picking code from that for a while. Now. Right. I, yeah. <laughs> like, I have previews, <laughs> but I'm not using the Faust. <laughs> I'm using your code, of course. <laughs> Well, and that's one of the values I think about Faust is like, I don't know. And I mean, it's a framework. It's a framework. And I I keep saying to people like the value is not the necessarily the next JS implementation, implementation. It's that you went and you like solve the problem. So it's like now if I come with Nuxt or Astro or Gatsby or something else, like I have a blueprint for the wheel that I can copy and I don't have to like reinvent it. So like, that's the metaphor that I use is it's not about the thing. It's about, Hey, we have this repeatable process that you can come in and look at and then take into whatever, like you said, like I'm taking bits of the code and doing it, or I'm taking it into Nuxt and a view view land and doing it. And Hey, that's what this, I think is cool. I think my bigger issue with it was the fact that I, it, need, I, I it was just I didn't need all those functionalities. Uh, yeah. I just needed I needed a small piece of to, to get what I needed to get done across the line. And if it was more modular in that sense, where whatever I didn't need wasn't there or it wasn't to be deactivated. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's okay. my issue right that's now good. with the auth client, and I had to do something else with it. But just that's, to give a well, few shout outs, that's good feedback to my. They, Oh yeah, sorry, sure. Jeff. Fin- finish. No, no, you finish your sentence. Yeah. All. Oh I'll yeah, I was just gonna say like the Faust team definitely asked. Um, that that was their one question is like Jeff, ask them what was the one thing they would change if they had if if like we were to 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 go and do it and like for both of you all to say the modular piece modularity which is I've given yeah. as as well like it's it's almost like I'd want less of a framework and more just like a collection of like of co- of code that I could just yeah. be like oh cool I want. Yep. Uh, Faust experimental plugins. Yeah, exactly. That that's, like that's... I, I import and import yeah. Faust. I don't know off, and then I do my thing, and it could work maybe even in multiple different JavaScript frameworks. That would be like the goal. I don't know how they do that, but yeah. But just to um, go, just to circle back, we're talking about sharing code and things like that. So this repo where uh, that we were using today and where the full demos will actually be over the weekend. Um, so it's using Faust. It's using Next.js. Um, there is, um, I mean, I mentioned at the beginning of this, Sean Campbell, who's probably, is he still on? So Sean yeah, helped me with all the TypeScript. So I gave a thank you at the beginning, but now it's recorded. Thanks, Sean. But in addition to yeah. that, um, <laughs> if you take a look at a, a lot of this code, um, is inspired, for example, from Blake's, uh, WP engine demo, um, over okay. at Dakota a few months ago. Um, this entire, uh, feed library over here, um, was was heavily, heavily stolen from Alex and his work over at the WPGraphQL.com. And if I can steal it and use it, you know who else can? Your DevRel website needs an RSS feed. I will keep saying it until it happens. Okay. But I think um, we got one coming for you. For reals. But, um, but that's why this is an open repo. It Again, it's just experimental. So like, don't copy this blindly, but take a look at the different patterns that are in here. There's a bunch more that I'm planning on adding over the next uh, few weeks, including gravity forms and how to create a gravity forms block, uh, stuff with ACF, just more okay. patterns that people can hopefully steal and reuse and um, reach uh, feature parity and go beyond it. Awesome, awesome. Well, cool, y'all. Thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks again, David, for agreeing to do this, all the work that you're doing. Yeah, thanks um, for tolerating me for two whole hours. No, man. I'm excited. <laughs> this was, this like, was I'm quite, saying, a, I, I learned, quite a stretch. I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot. So, and I'll definitely be revisiting the plugin and maybe, maybe we can get together and do like a demo. You know, maybe we'll like 
make a demo site or something that we can yes. share with people. <laughs> Yes, let's that, not do it live. Um, it's a little bit more more <laughs> turnkey. Yeah, exactly. And you tell you when you sl- or Discord of me earlier was like, oh, my, my laptop's broken. I was like, all right, oh. come on, Jeff, buckle up. Like this, yeah. Get, get with it, man. Oh, get, get with it. it. So I think we did good given given us having to pivot at the end. Um, but yeah, lots of cool stuff here. Um, and I feel like we could all ramble on for hours. And so I'm gonna leave it at that. And thank you all for coming. <laughs> thank you, David. Of course. Um, Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everybody else. Thanks to the great folks at WP Engine. Thanks to the great folks in the community that make this entire platform worthwhile. It's it's great. It's great. WordPress is no longer, we're no longer here because of the backend DX. Let's face it, folks, Gutenberg. We're here because of the community and because of the ethos. So let's let's all keep Mm -hmm. it up. If, if you got that. anything out of this um, two hours, maybe it'll be, um, I don't know, a desire to uh, contribute to a little open source code. So. Yeah, here we go. All right. Well, y'all have a good afternoon, evening, morning in your local time zone. <laughs> see, see you later. Take well, care, everyone. Shut it on down. Bye.